USDA released its latest World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates Wednesday. The department is estimating no change to U.S. soybean supply and use from its last report, meaning the projected yield of 44.5 bushels per acre stays. The USDA is forecasting an increase in wheat production, increasing U.S. output by 23 million bushels. Nebraska's yield forecast moves up from 33 bushels per acre to 35 bushels per acre. The state is expected to produce its lowest wheat crop since 1944. And with 95 percent of this year's corn planted, the agency is lowering its forecast for production by 135 million bushels for a total of just more than 14 billion U.S. bushels. Yield is pushed down slightly to 156.5 bushels per acre. We started this week's market analysis with Mike Briggs by asking for his reaction to the corn estimates. I'm fine with it. Actually, I'd rather have that than something ridiculously unrealistic like when we had a 162 average. That's ridiculous. I think this is more, more like what we're going to have. And I think we're fine as so long as we don't end up with under a billion bushel carryout. As so long as we've got over, over a billion bushel carryout, I think the government's going to be really close in their $4.80 cash corn. And those of us that feed livestock can make a living then. Did you pl uh, try to play around this one at all? No, my all week I heard from my broker, well, this isn't going to be a big deal at all. You don't even worry about it. So I didn't worry about it. No, I really haven't done anything. And it's really hard to know what to do right now. It's a good question because with what's going on in the market itself, where you've got a lot of fund money leaving the market going into equities, the, the market's falling away, which I don't really totally understand in the nearby because the nearby is going to be really tight and you're having to make basis do all the work. So now corn in this area is like 75 to 80 over. And to me, that's really out of kilter. I don't see why corn need to, ever, ever needs to get more than 30 cents either side of the board. And it's all a function of money flow from the funds, and that really bothers me. You still, are you still kind of going off of a weather rally at this point? Or not at all for you? My biggest concern is actual physical supply of corn until the combines hit the field. And because we got late planted, now you've moved that back another 30 days. I don't think there'll be any early September, late August corn. It's going to be late September, early October corn. So you've got a pretty big span of time. You've got 90 days here where you still get a deal with $7.50 to maybe $8 corn again. And we learned the, the lesson the hard way this year. You can't feed cattle $8 corn and make any money. Based on what you think might happen in the cattle market over the next few months, when do you think you might see or might be able to carve out some sort of positive margin? Great question. I think it's not going to be until you get to where you can feed these cattle cheaper corn. Because once again, you can't make money feeding these cattle $8 corn. I'm really concerned as we go into the summertime as far as the market's concerned. This year, you always have a big increase from first quarter cattle supply to second quarter cattle supply. And this year, we had the smallest increase from first quarter to second quarter ever in history. Now we're going to have the largest increase from second quarter to third quarter ever in history. July through September is horrible beef demand time, and we're going to pile all this meat into this time period. I think it could get really bad here. Now, for those people that are hedged, they're going to be fine or cut their cattle covered some way with puts or something. And so if you don't get beat up too bad, I think you're going to have a chance to buy some feeders there because there you're going to be able to buy some feeders that you're going to be able to put that cheaper corn in in the fall. And then I think a guy's going to have a chance come next spring. There, there was never really a remedy to the demand concern, was there? Beef demand is not good because beef has gotten too high. And that's another thing everybody missed. Everybody thought we were going to have $1.40, $1.50 cattle. The consumer's not going to pay that. They're not even, every time the market goes to $1.30, it hits a wall and drops. The, the consumer's not willing to pay that. Beef has priced itself out of the market and you've got cheap chicken and cheap pork to rival it and it's really a problem and I think that problem's going to remain for a while. Packers seem to be making a little bit of money though. Packers got over and got on top of this thing. Beef got, beef got considerably higher going into Memorial Day holiday and the Packers done really well managing some his supply, not over killing the cattle that are in front of him because he knows he doesn't have a lot yet but he knows they're coming. So he doesn't have to, he's not trying to overkill and be greedy as far as what he's making for money because they kind of know they got round in front of this thing now and I think they're going to be in good shape probably into October, maybe December. How aggressive are you seeing feedlots be right now? Interesting question. What I've heard around and talking to people, we're kind of in a funny gray area here because we're about half full. What I hear most people, are you've got feed yards that are loaded up and they're clear full or they've got nothing. And so we're kind of in a funny position of being in the middle, which I'm fine with. We never are much more than half full this time of year.
So it's going to be interesting going forward to see what happens because those yards that are full, it's going to be interesting to see if they can sustain another round of losses to go into fall again. Do you try to position yourself anywhere related to corn before that June 28th acreage report? Great question. Not going to touch it. I, you know, that you're just playing Russian roulette there. Now, you're going to have some idea by then because you're going to have some idea what the crop looks like and what kind of weather you've had and maybe a little inkling of what weather after that's going to be like. So if you feel pretty safe, yeah, a guy can maybe sit there and wait and, and go hand to mouth a little bit. But I'm just warning you, physical supplies of corn from the end of July till the combines hit the field are going to be really tight.